Welcome back to the weekend edition. Uh, I'm Dr. Kingori Conversation here to me um, along the lines of how uh, both our genders, okay, kwa wale watu wa conservative, maju, najua nikisema both is tenor sensitive because we have more extra genders, but let's deal with the genders we have in Kenya uh, where our genders, the men and women can get along with uh, Jacob Aliet and Jerry Wamegwe. Jacob Aliet has a book called Unplugged. One of my take-homes from this book is an explanation whereby, in fact, most of our problems are psychological, one way or another, like utter violence in relationships. When someone goes uh, and gets violent with a spouse, man or woman, it's because of probably insecurities and iso vitu zingine. And uh, you explain uh, a concept where if people lived ha sort of hands-free, in this sense, if you lived by accepting that as human beings, uh, people are the way they are. Like if you knew your value as a human being, you wouldn't be so obsessed uh, with the idea of owning another person that you'd want to harm them uh, if you felt like your position in their life is threatened men are becoming weak and not because of women okay not because of women but also because of the when you peeled back the patriarchal structures men are growing up uh, not knowing their role in society you remember we we have a, we had a lot of initiation ceremonies that are not there anymore uh, boys are just growing up into men not even realizing uh, not having a particular purpose and uh, the role of men also in the in the family has been weakened and it is not necessarily weakened by women but it is weakened because of uh, what is happening in the sense that you will find a situation where uh, you actually have the same level of education or she's earning more than you and so on so you're not going to be able to uh, to maybe enforce discipline and so on so children are growing up almost without structure and this is also contributing what do you increase. mean by enforced discipline when she answers? Enforced discipline on the on the kids, for example, as a father. Can I can I can, can I clarify? Mm. You said when women earn more, mm. then you can't enforce discipline. Mm. Now you've backtracked and said enforced discipline on children. Mm. Now my question is, where did the children and the earning come come come? It's a good question. Within the household, uh, you will find a situation where if the, your wife is earning more than you, it becomes very difficult for you to, to become assertive in that particular Why? marriage or a situation. Why? Because of the way we have evolved. A woman is going to respect you when you are able to demonstrate higher value than her. If she feels she has more value than you, then actually she feels she is actually getting a raw deal by being in you, by being with you. But most of these women living marriages are more educated. It is because of that. When the, the ladies are educated and they have their jobs, then the pressure is actually on the men to step up. If you do not step up, what we have is a situation where the ladies are leaving the marriages. Because so women have also evolved to be, to be able to be attracted and to respect men who have men of higher value. Than so themselves. if your wife earns more than you and you can't get another job, that's when you become a thief. As in, <laughs> <laughs> as in it's a good question. And, and actually that's why I talk about the burden of performance. Because you'll find there will be a situation where your wife is actually earning more than you and so on. But you see, you, you find there are so many couples who, maybe they're both graduates, they're both working, and uh, they start life together, they're having kids. But you find the lady is actually pushing herself she goes ahead, gets a master's and so on, and she starts getting promotions and ascending in her career. But the guy remains the same. You find that creates some sort of turbulence. So I'm encouraging guys to take up the burden of performance. You cannot settle. You cannot be comfortable, regardless of whether whatever your wife is doing. Your wife must never out earn you. No, no, no. She can out earn you. The important thing is you have to demonstrate. You have to look you, busy. Like not you, busy. Like you have to do something. <laughs> what you normally say is that women love value. You must show that you're actually increasing in value and they are putting your best effort. Otherwise, she's going to feel cheated. Then if you have, you, you, you 
have to always uh, increase your value. Uh, how do you explain in this context why Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos lost their wives? Okay, now as far as Bill Gates, you know there are a lot of intricacies because, because for example, they were saying that there was cheating, there was another woman that he was seeing and so on. Jeff Bezos, there was a mention of Elon Musk and so on. So I think that one is a bit more complicated unless you really know the, the inside information. But also the important thing is, as I mentioned, it is not just about money because masculinity is not just about being an ATM. You must be able to demonstrate intelligence, confidence, you must show leadership, you must be creative and you must be a problem solver. That is what makes a woman attached to you. So it's not just about money. So lazima ukwe mtu wa kufuruga, si pesa tu as in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you must hustle, you must be valuable, you must have what we call captivation. You must be an interesting person, not a boring person. Because women have evolved now to have all these expectations. And uh, if you look at the situation we are facing right now, most ladies when they are walking away, you will find that they are walking away from men who have very low energy, uh, lose, don't have initiative and so on. So, so that is very, very important. Especially if the ladies have has a higher uh, level of expectation of excellence or performance than you, then it's going to create dysfunction in the relationship. Okay, so outstanding feature of a husband, kuchachisha, as in you, <laughs> you have to be, you have to be. Uh, and uh, my, fa my favorite question in this, Basi, now kwa yu umeenda, uh, as a man, if your woman picked a fight, mm. uh, there are two types of responses. Uh, there is one that will ask, uh, what did you do? And then there is one that ata ingia kwa vita, kesi badai. So uwi wa kuingia kwa vita, ata pick fights ata when you don't even need one. Di ukwe. What do you mean by a fight? An argument kufuruga, or a physical kufuruga. fight? Kufuruga. Si umesema you have to be active. Lazima onekana you can, you can do something. No, 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 no. Then how do you demonstrate? How do you demonstrate? No, no, no. It's about value. It's not about, it's not about physical strength. It's about value. You must have, uh, you must demonstrate that uh, in the future you are able to create exciting outcomes. You're not just like a piece of wood that is lying there. You must be actually pursuing your purpose, as you call it. And that's why men need a purpose. Most guys, when they get their jobs, they think that is it. They go to work, they go home, they watch football, they take beer. So that is actually not enough. Because you'll find that the women are engaged in much more things. You'll find the ladies who are working, they're actually either pursuing higher studies or they're actually going for coaching, they're going to the gym, they have the charmers and so on. But guys just want to watch uh, football and take beer. And that Wake creates up, a lot of problems. Go to work, come home, pick up beer. Yako. Yes. It's not enough. It is not enough. So peace is not enough. That, that is not peace now. <laughs> that is now not peace. Okay. Aya, you have two things to say from what he has said. A lot of things. I am, I am. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. She this agrees. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> As in, let me ask, what, 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 what reason do men have not to give them? Kwanza considering there's a motherhood penalty. I've gotten children. I need to raise children. Because men are here being catered for unpaid labor. Children, as in, you, you, you really want to have that debate that no, women no, no. pay the highest prices as far as children are concerned? No, I was talking about motherhood penalty. That is something that happens. A that? penalty? Yes. Please and explain before I respond. First of all, Tuanze, why you going to be a leo? Every person you'll be like, oh my God, he's such a good dad. Kila mtu mi nge kujapa na mtoto wange sana sasa kwa nini ya kupeleku, kwa nini ya ana daycare, uo mtoto wa lienda wapi, kwa nini ya mekuja na mtoto kwa studio, ndio mtoto wa meanza kulia, uo mge kujapa na mtoi. I'm telling you, 100% and the no. can agree. Unge kwa na watu 10 volunteers hapa wako kushiki mtu, oh my God, you're a dad, oh my God, let us hold that. Oh my, he's such a wonderful man, he's doing such a superb job. Wewe, sahi tu, uke kuja na mtoto. Sahi, hii cloud ya kila mtu wapange kwa cloud best daddy of the year. No. Mini nge kujana the same baby. Kila mtu wangisema, u mama na plants, ajuku okay. liangiacha uo mtoto, kwa niya mekujana mtoto, kwa ni, ni u mama kwanza na tesa maid. That only so, happens kama mtu ya mehanguko na speaker. Mtu ya metulia. Ah, 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 imati, ah, imati. Ah, tuende na wetu say kwa mall. Mtoto wako wanze kulia na mi wangu wanze kulia. See the reaction. Like this. That's motherhood penalty. But that's a story for another day, right? Anyway. And, and before we delay, pia kuna men penalty. Yenye ulko me explain ya. Yeah, if someone. Motherhood premium. The fact that you can just no. walk in here and everybody will applaud you as that of the year. Or, or, or the fact that men say they are babysitting their own children. If Imagine boy falienda chama when you're I'm babysitting. Babysitting whose children? Your own children. 
Now they become your, somebody you're babysitting because babysitting is an activity where you pay me to take care of your children. But anyway, I took a call. I got too bad one paid labor. The fact that this man can come from work, go home, have a beer, and watch football. My God, must be nice to be a man. I want to be one in the next life. Because oh, imagine the true. only expectation I have yeah. is to take beer and watch. Food that itakwe mepikwa, food itakwe mepikwa, nguo zako zitakuwa zimepaswa. Yaani tu wewe ni kuingia kwa hiyo hauna kuvuru. When you basi it's true. Kuvuruga. Si mimi. No, no, no. basi it's true. Women mba. hate watching men having fun. As in you, as in we I, I can say this that some women are allergic to watching men having a good time. But why should men have a good time? We should all if we are all if we are all if we are all not men should have a good time. <laughs> Why? why should you have a good time? Why should you be watching football? Because Mimi ni kaitu pale kwa kitchen, ni kupikia daddy. Oh my god, baby, you've come home from work, you've been searching for us. Oh my god. So ni kueke food apple. What, what is your role in all this? Si tuliambu hivyo ndi wadigo ufanya. As in, they know. Tuliambu ha, okay. Ha, f, how do you expect to keep a marriage? Let's say in the context of you want a marriage, yet uh, kuna someone who can take care of your man like that, now see that what happened. So, so the point is, when I come home, me ni metoka job, pia umetoka job. Tu metoka. Me kwanza ni mechevu tu na busi yangu, ni mengi ya kuanyumba. Then you may come home, you are feeling all sorts of, you know, everything. Kwanza ni ufike utolewe koti, my I have to come back as a man. Ni utolewe koti, ni ambu, eh, karibu, ni kweke arsenal. I mean, before they lost. I mean, I mean, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Right, ni kweke TV. Kwanza niambia watoto wanyama. See, that's what you all want because men should be having fun. Ni toe watoto kwa sitting room. Ni make sure kuna toys ndi ukai pala we know emigu. Watch TV. Ni kulize TV. Kata skabaridi ama kata skalite. Sindi yo? Ya hape tamba kaza man. Hey, yo, life in a bamba. Mimi ni, mimi, I'm expected by society. Nizae. Sawa. Nizae. Kwa ni unazae every man? Kwa ni unazae every man? According to Let's say equal, equal things. Sis what any graduate, ni come job, ni come home, ni kupikie, jutakangi kukula chakula za demo a job, nutakanga kula chakula za wife. Ni make sure ujapata kelele because you know men should have fun. Amnanga noma chali ya kikula nini demwa job, chakula za demwa job. Kama mina sikula kula we kula. Kama mina kula yo food, mbona u sikule. After all, sune nanga kwa mama wakibana na unakula food yake na unanga noma. So kwa nini uki come home, ukona noma na food ya demwa job? Na, sawa, sawa. Exactly, so u come home, mini kumekia sure that umekula, you are okay, you are watching your best game. Ni make sure everything in the house, unpaid labor. Unpaid, not being discussed here. Yeah, what our conversation with uh, Jacob Aliet and uh, Jerry Wamuge continues on the other end of this short commercial break. <laughs> Yo, Mazze, welcome to the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. This is a continuation of our conversation on all genders getting along. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. And I guess we're to need Jacob Aliet and Jerry Wamuge. In a country where men dominate and hold power, and have the money and the will to do things and move things as it should be. If something as simple as having breastfeeding access in places of work such as this, where women, if they get children, they can come with to work and breastfeed them, which was an act passed by parliament in 2017, has never been enacted anywhere and a parliament that is full of men, where women do not even form enough quorum. I'm just trying to show you where the power lies. The power doesn't lie with women, the power lies with men. So if women have left, if men have left and women were left holding the bag, so you want to blame the fact that this problem has come and has escalated because of women? Ah, okay, Sawa. Then, at, before we go back to Jacob, apo kwa breastfeeding, mm -hmm. um, let's take a single, uh, a single family unit, for example, mm -hmm. in terms of parenting. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, uh, for a mother to go to work, uh, we've got technology has gotten in place, mtu wana jikamua before in the job. Like um, a baby can have bottled uh, human milk mm. uh, kwa nyumba mm. akiwa nao. Is there an effect to a child who grows like that versus a child who's been raised with the intimate parental care from scratch? 
So when you say intimate parental care, do you mean by putting, if a, ba if a baby latches on your breast? Yes, yes. Actually, no. The, the, the SI unit of babies is love. Whether the milk comes from a goat, it comes from a human, the most important thing a baby needs is love. Just love. First of all, that's the basic need. You can be a man, na uchukwe yo milki meekspresiwa, uwekele hapa, na mtoto atalachi tu na nyonye. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sijui kama ni kumuko kwa lacha ama kwa kunyo nyambuzi, but... <laughs> but Jacob, um, what's your take on hiki to ya who left? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good question and I'm glad that she's raised uh, something about feminism. So it's something I'd like to mention here because I can see in the audience there are several young ladies. Um, f the first feminist convention was held in, in Seneca in the U.S. in 1884. And uh, when feminism started, it was about the fight for equality. Okay, Women wanted equal rights. They needed the right to have property, the right to vote, and so on. And that was given. Okay, After that, uh, when women entered the workplace, then they realized that they're not able to compete with men. Of course, it was being blamed on uh, patriarchy and, uh, and boys' clubs and so on. So then came what we call affirmative action, which we even have here in Kenya. We are now talking about uh, representation of women in parliament. We have women reps in many organizations now. Even the law requires that we observe gender parity. So we have a situation where maybe you're hiring two people and uh, the interview results, the first six guys are men and the seventh one is a female then you're going to pick number one and number seven. That is what gender parity requires, and ke in Kenya, actually, this is a law. So uh, the idea that uh, we are talking about, like when you're talking about um, deadbeat dads, um, she's right, the percentage is small, even of, uh, of the, the men who are being kept by women. But uh, I think anyone who has been around and has been observing what is happening, we know of so many men, I think even in cases like in central Kenya, where alcoholism is a problem among the youth and so many men are not able to take responsibility. And then also as much as you can say that uh, this, these women who are working and able to support men are few, they are actually the ones who dominate the conversation. We know of so many of our local celebrities who have left their husbands. And it's always the women leaving the men. You don't have a case where the man actually left the women. So it is a trend that you are seeing among modern independent women, even here in Kenya. So why, why is the, why, what's the backing of it's, it's the women who leave the men? Mm -hmm. uh, I could argue that it's sometimes men leave women. Mm -hmm. Men just don't post. Men also leave women, eh? But uh, the ones that are public, that are visual, and that we know that are in the media, it is the women leaving the men. Uh, according to the, res uh, the research, you know the, the challenge you also have in our, in our Kenyan society, we have uh, what we call marriages breakdown, as opposed to people getting divorced in an organized process. Someone can just walk away. So our statistics are not very clear. But in the U.S., like states like uh, Florida, where they take care of that, women live 70 to 80 percent of the time in all the marriages. They are the ones who file. Uh, for divorce for various reasons so that is a trend that we are also seeing here within within the country okay yeah so, uh, so uh, first of all mm -hmm. 70 percent of marriages are left by women who are educated college graduates not all 70 percent of the marriages as is stating are left by women but 70 percent of divorces of women who are educated college degrees and such are instituted by women. There's a difference in those statistics. Okay. So does that mean when a woman is educated, uh, she's educated um, as in, s does that mean somehow that uh, education of women is an enemy of marriage? No. Actually, it doesn't mean that. It's in total, it sums up if I have options, and those options are not being provided in this marriage. And if this marriage is not serving the purpose, it's supposed to be, a marriage is supposed to be nurturing, a marriage is supposed to be a communion of two people, right? Coming together and forming, you know, a bond, loving each other, and raising a family. Very many things can lead to a marriage breaking down. Yes. Violence is one of them. Lack of love, lack of attention, people growing and dis discovering they don't want to be together. And many other reasons that could be there. There could be in-law pressure as we come back to Kenya. There could be pressure from people. There could be, I, I am progressing in my career and the other partner and, the, and my spouse is not happy about it. There are so many various reasons that people can live. And if I have the economic empowerment and I have the wherewithal to actually live a marriage, where should I, where should I stay somewhere where love is no longer being served? 
So most people are in marriages that they will leave when they afford it. Actually, no, that's not what I have said. Do not put words that I haven't said. I have said, if a marriage is not serving the purpose that you initially came together, yeah. many people, when you talk to them, actually, I'm in this marriage because of the children. So those are the excuses we see. Even, we even make memes about these things, right? Okay. So what I'm saying is, if a marriage is not serving the purpose it's supposed to be, there's a reason you came together with your wife or with your spouse or why you two are together, right? Okay. And in a country like Kenya, first of all, most marriages break down because of sexual and gender-based violence. I should know that is what I do. All right, yeah. there's a lot of that. So that's part of the things that break down marriages. Okay. So I am saying, if somebody is empowered enough and they feel that this marriage is not serving them, could be the man, could be the woman. Okay. Is that what in the manosphere in a hypergamy? Options. Yeah, you could, you could call it uh, hypergamy. Yeah? But uh, I think she's made some very good points which I need to, to build on. Um, there is this ideology that uh, marriage is supposed to make people happy. And that is one reason why marriages are breaking down. Because if you look at uh, people who've read the marriage vows, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. There's nothing about happiness. So happiness, again, is a concept that has been really misunderstood. And uh, there is this Western ideology, for example, that if you get married, somehow you're supposed to be magically happy. And yet, even if you look at how we have evolved as human beings, happiness is supposed to be a temporary state, like a sort of a reward that comes as a result of accomplishing something. But uh, we find that people walk into marriage with this expectation that you're supposed to be have this high of happiness throughout. And that false expectations is one reason why we have a lot of marriages breaking down. There's a point I needed to build up on as far as uh, feminism. Um, I talked about affirmative action. Like, once this affirmative action was achieved, particularly by the people who are leading the feminist movement, then they went on now to talk about uh, the transgender people. That's why we now have LGBTQ. Because we had people now who are transgender and they wanted to be included in, in feminism. So feminism wanted the abortion rights. They wanted the right to be able to abort a child that they don't want uh, the father. And they also want the situation now where we have now what we call uh, blank slate equalism. Blank slate basically means that when a child is born, um, whether they're male or female is social engineering. It does not matter in terms of the biology. So they say now we have gender at birth and we also have uh, your gender right now. So that is what feminism is right now because feminism actually achieved almost everything they set out to achieve. Women can now vote, they have jobs, they own property and so on. Any kind of limitation Unless now you have situations where now you have a lot of poverty or in very rural areas, in the modern places, if you, unless you have a limitation in terms of your family, that means you're poor. But in terms of gender itself, a girl can study anything they want. They can pursue any career they want. We have so many female presidents even right now. So you cannot argue it's still a patriarchal society. In fact, it's actually gone the opposite way. It is now men who are complaining that the women have been too empowered. Uh, our education CS, uh, Professor Magoha, when he was releasing the, uh, the KCSE results, we know that even among Tibet institutions, even in the universities in Kenya right now, the girls have outstripped the boys in terms of enrollment. So the boys actually are falling behind. And yet you'll find that uh, this, it's still being perpetuated, the idea that this is a patriarchal society. Actually, the, the idea is, the reason actually even me why I started talking about this is because uh, men are actually falling behind. When we look at, uh, when I give talks, for example, in high schools, you find that the, the ladies are very outspoken, very confident. In fact, the question we're asking ourselves, who is going to marry these girls? Sour. So, so for, if you ask uh, who is going to marry these girls, so does it mean that confidence in a woman is a bad thing? No, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Yeah. But the way we've evolved as, as females, females, for example, we, ladies will always tell you they want a guy who is taller than them. Mm -hmm. Okay, they talk about the, the six figures. They want maybe a man who wants six figure salary and so on. So women want a man who can protect them, a man who is physically strong. They want a man who can provision. They don't want a weak man, and they want a man who can lead, who can provide leadership. Because uh, that is how we have evolved. We will probably evolve later to find women who ma who don't mind having a weak man in the household. But right now, our farm is such that ladies want a man who can provide, who can protect, who is confident and intelligent. If you got married to a lady from the KDF, mm -hmm. uh, 
do, do, don't, uh, you don't think that marriage would work because uh, she would be perceived to be stronger than you in the context of protection? No. I, I, uh, first of all, um, even if you find ladies in the KDF, an average man is likely to be stronger than them unless he's completely out of shape. So even in terms of physical strength, men are, have, we have more hemoglobin, we have more muscle because of testosterone, we are taller, stronger, reflexes and so on. So unless it's a man who is really lazy, you'll still be stronger. Maybe she's just more strained. She could be more trained and maybe know how to use weapons and fight. But you're going to be likely to be stronger. <laughs> no, no, no. You wouldn't. <laughs> Eh hey, yo wadau conversation yetu ya Jacob uh, Aliet na Njeri wa Migu atuwezi maliza na episode moja so please allow us to extend this conversation kwa hiyo party ya next week ndio tuchemshe tena vizuri pia nimeambiwa there are three recognized genders in this country so for all genders to get along uh, what do we need very good vibes from our guests so till next week see you next time my name is Dr Kingori